Okay. All right, here we are with Sonia Testerman. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, it's actually my husband's last name, Testerman, because oh. actually my real last name, my maiden last name is Fells, F-E-E-L-S. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and I'll um, probably be having my last name when I finally get divorced. <laughs> oh, you're going through that right now. Oh, yeah, I was married for almost 35 years. And um, he got rid of me. <laughs> okay. Well, that's another <laughs> subject, I guess. Um, <laughs> and uh, where, where are you uh, right now? I'm, in I'm at my brother's house. I've been here for almost three years. My bro brother works for the government. He's a GS-12. So he's been stationed in Taiwan for several, many years. And he's not coming back for probably another two years. So I've got the house by myself. It's just empty. And he's like, okay, stay at my house. It's a good thing I did. I've had water breakages in the house and <laughs> all awesome. kinds of issues come up. So it basically saved his house from being flooded out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Um, I'm not sure why that's funny, but you laughing makes it funny, I guess, right? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Um, so I, I think I learned about you through, uh, autodidactic. They had a, a Tartarian crystal city thing that they were doing. Oh yeah. And you were one of the guests and, um, kind of fascinated me this idea of dimensions on top of dimensions. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that before we talk about other things. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know how much your listeners know, so I'll start from kindergarten. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Because I, I, everything I do, I could speak so out of uh, topic uh, about things that no one could understand. So I bring everything down if I was teaching a kindergarten class. So everyone, layman's terms, even lower than layman's terms, because a lot of this is, it's over everyone's head. <laughs> so basically, in this reality that we're in now, um, everything is frequency. Depending on the frequency that you reside at is the dimension you're currently residing in. So you can be in 3D, you can go up to 4D, and you can even slip down into 2D, depending on the vibration you carry inside of your heart. Because it allows us, most people slip in and out of dimensions all day long and don't even realize it. Oh, wow. Have you ever gone somewhere and you're like, Oh, it feels so good here. I never want to leave. That's also, that's also um, a dimensional frequency that's usually on a higher than 3D, and you've actually slipped into it. Or if you've ever gone anywhere and you just get cold chills and you got to get out of there. <laughs> Same thing. You slipped into a lower dimension. Oh, wow. Um, there, there's, a, there's a whole lot of information on this i'm sure if you could go look it up because i've never looked it up but i know it's got to be out there somewhere i would imagine <laughs> and have you noticed how all kinds of information is finally coming out about the tatarian age um pyramids everything where before because you look like you're around my age where none of this information was available at all and now all of a sudden where's all this information coming from yeah. You have to question that too. I mean, like all of a sudden we've got pictures and we've got um, information about uh, past history that was just never simply there. It's actually a lot of it's coming from AI um, because not all of AI is corrupt and AI can also be used to get out a lot of the information that had been stored in the Vatican and other places. That's where a lot of this archives are coming from. Hmm. Which that's just a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> but um, yeah, so basically dimensions are frequencies. Everything is a frequency. Um, we, we even have technology, which will be let out, where it's called um, Medusa technology, where if they change your frequency and then put it into a set hold, I could turn you to stone. Or I could turn you into a puddle of a liquid because none of us are solid. We're only set at a certain frequency because we carry that within our heart, hmm. which is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but it makes me think of those statues that some researchers look at and go, how did they do this? 
Makes some of those statues were living beings at one point. Right. That's and what they makes were, me think. Yeah. They were, um, it wasn't, I have I had a lot of people ask me about those statues and, and I'm like, some of those statues were living beings. And the reason it's so detailed, it, it's not been, what do they call that? Uh, when they take it and they print it and they can print anything. Oh, the 3D uh, printer. It like a 3D printer. Yeah. yeah. It's not done with the 3D printer. It's done with Medusa technology. And that's mm. why you can see like a light sheet over something. Like if there's a statue and it looks like there's a veil, you can see through the veil, yet it's all stone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does that work? <laughs> right. Yeah. I think, um, I don't remember who it was that was doing a video and it just came to me. I'm like, what if these were people that were just turned into stone? Like, cause there's, there so is not, there, there is no technology that we can't think of. That's not already out there. Basically when I look into this from, cause I'm a remote viewer, maybe I should say that I am a remote viewer, which means that because of my abilities, which we all can have these abilities, but a lot of us have been really severed from it because of the calcification of our third eye. Mm. Um, we have been so taken down as humans. And over time, instead of saying, oh, we came from caveman, actually, it's the other way. We've been degenerated and degenerated and degenerated instead of Look, we're at the pinnacle of our existence. No, we're not. Not right. even close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, something that struck me about the conversation you had was um, talking about how, you know, when you hear a, all these uh, dimensions stacked on each other and when you hear like nature and bird sounds and other things, um, that's the other dimensions um, trying to contact us. Is that what you said? I don't remember exactly, but. Does that sound right? That sounds weird, but. <laughs> 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 um, when I look at dimensions, um, they're not actually stacked on top of each other. They're all in the same place in space. The only thing dividing them is a frequency, yet all the frequencies are here. It's like if I turned it this way, it looks flat. And it's not like this, 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 and this. It's actually all here. There's no separation. It's here, which is the hardest thing mm. to grasp. <laughs> yeah, it's not like we have to go up to this next dimension or go down to this next dimension. No, it's all still here in the same place in space. It's very strange how this works, but it's just like saying everything is in the now. There's no tomorrow. There's no yesterday. It's all in the now. Right. It's the same thing it's like you have a per perfect circle okay and you take that circle which is let's just say the whole circle is the now which is we'll call that time at least in our reality and we take it and we flip it over on itself and we get the figure eight now where it crosses like this is just a point in the now so we could actually traverse time because there's no such thing as time because it's all now so what you were doing I don't know, 100 years ago and what you're doing today and what you're going to do in another 100 years, it's all together now. It's, it's the hardest thing to wrap your head around because it's not 3D. <laughs> right. But here's the thing. Even though everything is in the now, we have something called timelines, which can change the now. It's kind of like, you know, a spider when it makes a web and we start off with just this hard shell frame mm -hmm. and then he goes back later and he adds all of this to it and it goes everywhere to make the in between yet some of them can go back to the beginning of where he started the first initial web this is how our reality also works why we have timelines why we have different places we can go in the now it's really not a 3d concept it's like um, a snowflake and it's as diverse as no matter where you go on the snowflake, there are multiple parallel realities <laughs> in the now. <laughs> <laughs> wow.
<laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's so, a lot. Let's back up to a different now. How did you learn all this stuff? How did you come about this knowledge? Okay. I don't know exactly what happened, but <laughs> when I was born and I was, my father was army, even though he was a, a German citizen, he wanted to be an American citizen. And it was back during um, the Vietnam war and they wanted people uh, to draft him into the military. So when he came to the United States, they gave him a green card and said, now you're going to the military, you go right back to your country. And my dad's like, couldn't speak any English, but he's like, I'll go to the military. I don't want to go back to my country. <laughs> because, you know, wasn't that good in Germany at that point. This was back in the <clears throat> early 60s. So we got stationed all over the snow globe. We didn't just live in the United States. States. Matter of fact, we didn't live in the United States very much. So when my mom had me, she had me over in Germany, but not at a military installation. She had me at a little tiny German hospital in Gelnhausen, Germany. And when I was born, they had uh, the nurse and the doc doctor took me immediately from my mother. And I was gone for two days. What? She was so distraught. And thought I was dead that her oh milk God. and her breasts dried up. She thought I died. I would have wow. been her second child. Well, they bring me back and told her some ridiculous story how they had to take her to a, a, a hospital because I might be jaundice. We were in a hospital. What? Yeah, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but back then, people were stupid and didn't question anything. I'd have been all over them. You're not taking my child? No way. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, from that point, um, I started having memories. I mean, most children, little kids, they don't have memories of being a baby, and I do. So I'm thinking, I was born this way, <laughs> a lot of it. I was born without blocks. That's all I can say. And I think one of the reasons I was taken was to put some blocks on me, because I think I was born fully without blocks. Wow. And I think it was to protect me, because you can't have somebody come into this reality with zero blocks on. So they put governors on. <laughs> I, that's the only thing I can think of. And as I got older, the blocks started falling off. <laughs> so it's really when I hit my, my 20s, I had started having blocks coming off left and right. <laughs> but I, I could do and see a lot of things as a child and I was talking to my parents about it, and they're always looking at me like I'm Cracker Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> and they always said, oh, you have an imaginative imagination. I'm like, no, I'm telling you what I'm telling you because that's what I see and that's what I know. <laughs> I'm not inventing it. I'm telling you. <laughs> was there ever a so point, I, I'm sorry, was there ever a point where they're like, huh, maybe she is telling the truth or... They just no. assumed that you were imaginative? Yeah, I just had a very vivid imagination. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they would say. You have a very vivid imagination. Let's drop this subject. Talk about something else. Mm. Yeah, they, they, they were not mentally equipped to deal with a child like me at all because they themselves, I deemed them like adult children. They were like adult children. I mean, now, because I'm 55 now, and I look back, because my mother passed last year, and I look at her, because I can remember so much of it, um, and I keep thinking, oh my gosh, you were like a child until you died, really. I mean, the knowledge is no knowledge, maybe a fifth grade level, even though she graduated high school. Mm -hmm. There was just nothing there. And then with my dad, so indoctrinated and one-track mind and really doesn't think you have to... Well, military, they break you down and they rebuild you. Right. I mean, why do they wear the military dog tags? Because the elites consider you the lowest of the low. You're the dog. That's why you got dog tags. You're hmm. a dog, a pet. And that's only if you're liked, you're a pet. But yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Hmm. So, oh, and I'm the only one like this in my family from my siblings. <laughs> Right. Not even my relatives are like me at all. None of them. And I've met both sides of my relatives. My mom's from Oklahoma and all of them. Oh, no. They're like my mom. And then my father from Germany. They're just like my father. 
<laughs> so someone broke the mold when when you came around, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but my daughters are just like me. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, and um, they were just born like that because I'm sure they got, of course, half my DNA. <laughs> So they're just like, yeah, I've got a 33-year-old daughter named Cassie and a 30-year-old daughter named Wendy. And yeah, they're as out there as I am. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe for people who don't know, I, I sort of know, but what is remote viewing? Okay. I didn't know what remote viewing was either until a couple of years ago. Um, I don't know if you watched um, how many videos you watched of mine, but if you watch some of my beginning ones, um, I talk about how I just retreated from this reality because it, I couldn't stand it. Um, <laughs> so I kind of lived in the woods and um, didn't socialize very much. But um, a couple of years ago, several years ago now, uh, my daughter, Wendy, my 30 year old uh, said, mom, get out of the house because i really wasn't in the house that much but get out into the world let's 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 get onto this internet because i didn't i didn't even have a cell phone nothing nothing i, I just wasn't going to be a part of this reality i hated it mm -hmm. um i didn't like what was going down and even if i would scream to the hilltops they would just deem me insane and we're not going to listen to you you're nuts <laughs> right so i just retreated um my daughter got me out um we started surfing the web a little bit. She had to show me how to, I knew nothing about tech. I didn't even know how to use a cell phone. <laughs> you know, a smartphone, none of it. I never had one. Um, we came across the woman called Kelly Coffee, Kelly in the Raw. She now goes by Kelly Phoenix. And I really liked her instantly. And so I ended up going to her Patreon. And she's like, let's learn how to remote view. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> what is that? So she would tell us how to do it. And next thing you know, it was so simple. It's things I'd already done, but I just didn't know what it was called because I wasn't in that part. Of, I was never a part of this world, really. Mm. I haven't read anyone's books. I stopped watching media a really long time ago, decades ago. So the movies, no, uh, didn't do it, didn't watch TV. I never read anyone's books. I just did not care about this world. I cared about the world, but I didn't care about the human part of the world because it was so corrupted. I cared about nature. So when I usually talk to people about whatever, they're ta talking to me, have you read this book? Have you read it? It's like, no, no, I haven't. I mean, I just came back into the world and I'm not spending my time reading books. I'm going back out into the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I have no idea what anybody has and hasn't done. A lot of it's all new to me. People tell me names and it, I'm clueless. I have no idea. I, I don't know who you're talking about <laughs> because I haven't really been a part of the world. <laughs> I've been a part of something else and it's not the, the internet world. It's not the media world. It's not the Hollywood world. If you told me Hollywood actors, I wouldn't know who the hell you're talking about because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's all a bunch so, of nonsense. Yeah. So basically remote viewing and how to actually specify it and do it specifically. I learned that from Kelly Coffee. But um, the ability to do it, I've always had it. And I've always done it, but I never honed it like that before. Right. So what is that process? You just see things from... A distance basically but you see them in a way that you're not using your eyes well when I remote view um, all I have to do is think about something and I'm there and it can be where I'm looking at it from a distance but a lot of times I'm standing in it like I'm standing in my kitchen and all I got to do is go around like I'm in my kitchen and go look at stuff um, I've actually done this a couple of times where I've actually gotten in trouble. Um, I did not realize that when I go and do this, and I think it's more than remote viewing, I think it's also bilocating, because where your attention is, is where you are. Because everything here is actually thought, but it's compressed into a reality. I know that mm -hmm. sounds crazy. <laughs> so I would go a couple of places like I shouldn't have been there. Um, 
really bad places and I've actually had not people but other beings see me like how did you get here where are <laughs> who are you because they can see me because they're, right. they're not quite human and they have that ability because all I'm doing is traversing the dimension I'm in and everything is thought everything is in your imagination it is the key to unlocking everything we think we have to get in a car to go anywhere and it's wrong thinking that is a 3d reality when in when all the while all you have to do is learn how to unlock everything here and you can manifest yourself physically there it would be that's biolocation um, right or teleportation yeah yeah, yeah. so do yes. you do that um, not fully i only do it partially or my entire physical being because i'm actually being projected i don't know i am actually being and a lot of people like me are being projected into this reality through this physical body because in the end we are energy beings and because we're energy beings we can move our energy anywhere does that make any sense to you yeah <laughs> so because of that all i have to do is relocate where i'm being directed and we have the we all have this ability to do this it's just that no one it's like not knowing how to ride a bike because you didn't even know there was a bike to ride we have to reteach ourselves how to do these things or how are you ever going to learn how to do something you didn't even know was available to do Wow. <laughs> Everything you say, I'm like, I have to think about these things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. If you're having a hard time comprehending what I'm saying, can you imagine the common man? Oh, no. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. yeah. So when I go to talk to people, I'll have to take baby steps and just give you a little bit at a time because it's too much. It's overwhelming for most people. You have to be somewhat advanced in your thinking and out of, be able to get out of that rigid box we were put in as a starting off as a newborn yeah. in order to grasp these concepts and these abilities that are very unlikely to be used because we can't, if you can't perceive it, you're not going to do it. You have to be able to think, I can do this and perceive I can do this and believe in yourself. A lot of this abilities comes in your own belief systems. I believe I can do this and know it. And then you can start doing things. If you doubt yourself, you're not going to go anywhere. It's like, I doubt I can get on that bike and ride it. So the bike will never be driven. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely simple. Um, and mm -hmm. that's what a lot of things are like very simple, but they make it complicated so that people just get discouraged, just like, oh, or they would never Most think things, of it. Yeah. The main thing is if you wanted to control a group of beings, you're going to tell them they can't do anything. Absolutely nothing. Get your feet back on the ground. Get out of the clouds. Don't use your imagination because the imagination is the key to unlocking everything. You cannot move forward without that imagination. If you didn't think it into reality, you're not going to create it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting how imagination is so stifled today. Oh, it's always mm -hmm. been that way. People are afraid of, of people thinking outside the box and thinking of something different. Um, I was just talking to somebody about, oh, I forgot what it was. Oh, the, um, this guy, uh, I, I just got a van and my plan is to like take a trip. And, uh, there is a Saturday night live. You probably never saw Saturday night live, but there was this guy, Chris Farley, who had this character who lived in a van down by the river and made it sound mm -hmm. all seedy and everything. And I was like, that was kind of the purpose of that whole thing was to, you know, while it was, you know, funny at the same time, it, it, it makes people think that those people are up to no good or they're seedy or, or, or whatever it is, yeah, yeah. when it's a perfectly Hollywood. amazing thing to do. And there's, oh, creepy. <laughs> that's the word creepy. And it's like, yeah, it's perfectly it, creepy people out there that don't have vans and, you know. <laughs> 
I tell you what, Hollywood was definitely concocted as a psyops. If you wanted to control the thought of people, you create Hollywood, and then you tell these creator beings what they're going to create, what they can and can't believe in, what mm. is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Hollywood, the whole lot of them need to be arrested. I mean, it's awful. Um, if you're a part of Hollywood, odds are you're a part of the um, pedophilia going on in our world. You're a part of the cannibalistic behaviors. You're a part of so many negative satanic things. It's terrible. Most people have no idea what's really going on and has been going on. And it didn't just happen. It's been going on. It's, yeah. it's horrible. Yeah. I mean, think about how many movies have you seen lately? Not a whole lot coming out. You have to wonder where all these actors are. Are they all under house arrest because the jig is up? <laughs> what did they sell to become famous and popular? Their very soul? Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> oh, right. yeah, they did. Probably a lot the, of them hooked on that. The, dream. Right, and also the potential of the film or well, everything really the potential just gets lower down and dumbed down like what films could be what animation could be i went to an animation festival years and years ago and i was like wow it's just amazing what they can do with animation and then you watch animation in the movies or tv and you see just awful animation yeah. stuff that's just like yeah. cookie cutter assembly line you know lowest mm -hmm. common denominator stuff and same with the movies it's just for the most part, very like yeah. just it's all cost conscious, and you know, as you say, you know, you got to use those these stars who are compromised, and everything is so compromised. Yeah, yeah. I know when I was young, I used to love watching the Ray Harryhausen clay animation. Do you remember that? Mm, With no. Sinbad the sailor, um, he did he did the. Uh, a Voyage of the Seven Seas of Sinbad, and he did all the Sinbad ones that were clay animation. He did um, Gulliver's Travels. Um, okay. He did um, Jason and the Argonauts. These are really, these, these are way, way back there. <laughs> 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 Old movies. <laughs> right. I used to love the clay animation because there was so much human potential put into that. Everything had to be touched, had to be formed, had to be made for each shot. So much of him went into making that. Whereas today, it's all AI. It's yeah. all AI. It's yeah. terrible. There is, and there's no plots. They're all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch movies, and I don't really, but I do have daughters that grew up in my house, and they've watched stuff, and it's like, I'd walk through the living room and go, oh, God, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah that's that's kind of my attitude too i gotta kind of leave because it's everywhere unfortunately well um yeah let's change our focus here because i um have been getting into this tartarian stuff and have noticed some things in my neck of the woods just like mm. i'm sure everybody else has noticed things who oh yeah this stuff and just kind of wonder i don't know i i kind of asked you a little bit before i didn't know how much preparation you needed to like take none. a dive but apparently none <laughs> so i don't know i know you're in vermont and you're in i don't even remember the name of your town <laughs> uh brattleboro brattleboro wow what a what a name brattleboro yes. <laughs> so supposedly named after some colonel who never came to brattleboro but they decided to well, that's well they make that stuff up you know <laughs> yeah no it's true <laughs> Oh my gosh. And there's a street called Canal Street. Um, Canal Street. Which makes me think that there were canals around and that um, there's also other things going on. Do you have any um, information that you can look into? Actually, I'll just look now. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll see. I mean, because I really don't know. Um, I, I never go and research anything. And would you like to know why? Why? Because most of it's made up crap anyway. There's mm. nothing real about it. So all you're looking up is somebody's invention. Right. <laughs> True. It's just a story. 
And then, you know, this whole thing about let everybody learn the story. How can we prove that was even real? No, somebody made most of our history up. I say 99.9% .9 of our history is all fabricated. All of wow. it. Pretty bad. Yeah. I will tell you this. When I, when, because, you know, I live in Delaware. Oh, I do? live in okay. Newark, Delaware. So um, it's right, not too far. I'm like 10 minutes away from Wilmington. <laughs> okay, I was, I was just in Delaware, actually. Uh, a couple oh, weeks were ago. you? What part of Delaware you were you in? Uh, Georgetown and oh, it's not too far from me. Yeah, Rehoboth Beach. Oh, that's way down there. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> down by Maryland, <laughs> by the Eastern Shore. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm up further. I'm up where you know where the uh, top of the Chesapeake Bay is. Um, okay. You know the Chesapeake Bay at all? It's the whole bay that runs through Maryland. Right. <laughs> I'm up at the very top and then down a little bit. I'm, I'm right, right next to New Jersey. I'm literally five minutes away from Pennsylvania, about 10, 15 minutes away from New Jersey, and about 10 minutes away from Maryland. I'm, wow. I'm right in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm close to everything. So, but I've noticed that when I've looked into our, this part of the world, because you're right there in Vermont, that's this whole section here. Um, we had mad civilizations here before us, you know, um, and they go, they go back um, probably about seven, 800 years when they existed in that whole time frame. And then we had the big catastrophes. Um, I don't know if your audience knows this, but we are, and this is gonna blow their minds. I really don't want, I like to say this to people that don't know anything, but we are in a dome and i call it a snow globe because we're in the dome we're in a domed off part of our reality there is so much more to our reality outside of our dome um if you get a chance i made video 126 um you might find it interesting and it talks about our bigger reality but um our dome is flat and it's like it's a crater and it's like a teacup so Think of this being our dome with a dome over it. And if I tipped it over, you could see that it's deep inside. Well, there's an area in our dome here, and there's areas underneath where we have natural cavern systems. And the way our entire bigger Earth is, is that we have big, huge oceans that you could probably put 50 domes in. Mm -hmm. And this stuff is just like our ocean. It ebbs and flows and it's on a cycle. And when it does a certain cycle, it's ebbing. And that water is coming into our snow globe and it mm -hmm. floods. And that's why we've had the mud floods because it's like a teacup because it's got sides and it holds water. So this is what's caused these mud floods because it's on this cycle. Um, oh, hmm. Cycles are really long. I mean, it, it takes a long time to go to, think of an ocean, how the water comes in and goes out. You know, it takes seconds for it to come in and go out. But because of the size of this and how small we are, when it goes this way and comes back, talking a long time for us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe a couple hundred years <laughs> because that's how small we are. On the bigger earth i mean and that in itself is just mind-boggling i always tell people um if you knew what our reality was really most people would go psychotic and they couldn't handle it because we've been so lied to from birth it would undo the foundation of everyone's reality to know that everything we've believed is a lie and it was only done to us so they could control us you know, and you can't take people's foundations away from them. Some people just will go psychotic. They can't handle it. They go off the deep end because they've got to know that tomorrow's going to look like this. Yesterday looked like this. And you can't take that foundation away from them. You just can't. Yeah. They can't handle it. Right. So what do you see uh, about Brattleboro or Vermont specifically? Um, I see a thriving civilization there. Um, I see that a lot of it got wiped out. Um, looks like about 200 years ago, um, 
most of the structures in that area were actually taken away. Uh, actually, a little bit more than 200, maybe about 250 years ago. Um, they left a few things standing in your uh, where you live because I'm seeing some buildings. They look red brick. They look like some of them are kind of like in the dirt. <laughs> It's like, it's like I'm seeing the side of a building and it's like this because this is the dirt and this is the top of the building and you can see the building is going underneath where the dirt is. Mm. <laughs> but I'm also seeing that at one point we had more canal systems, like you said, in this reality because the water was the power. We had free energy uh, because the water is the power. Everything was done. Uh, in an enclosed system with the star forts. Of course, you know this if you're looking into it. And um, the water was a big one, a big one. Everything is, everything in this reality is done on a gridding system. We have a gridding system above us. Just think of a grid and it's got, it's like this, but all the way across it's going down and it's going vertical and horizontal above us. But what most people don't realize is we have a grid below us because it connects even though it's under the ground you've got that same grid down here and you've got the grid up here and it does this kind of a system with energy mm -hmm. and all they did was tap in using their canal systems using their pyramids using their star forts the way they had made them um making them like holding a, like a battery like all these star forts and buildings had a kind of crystalline structure within the brick itself, which would be like a, a battery holding energy. And um, they used the gridding system above us and below us, which we are never taught this stuff, that that is our natural free energy. Um, you can go and look at some of these, they call them megalithic sites, but they're not megalithic. They're not that old. They're saying, you know, like Stonehenge and places in France like Karnak, they're saying they're megalithic. No, they're not. They're, they're probably seven, eight, nine hundred years old at the most, at the mm. most. But at one point, humanity had all this tech and it was earthen technology um, because it's here. So it got taken away from us because right. of greed. I think there's a place in New Hampshire called Little Stonehenge. I've never been there, but. Oh wow! Um, no, I've never, I've never been there either. I never even heard of it. I haven't heard of a lot of things though. <laughs> <laughs> right, because you're living in. The... <laughs> yeah, because I was just cut myself off from humanity. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Huh. So that's that's interesting because I'm well. One thing that's fascinating to me is that Brattleboro, this area, was um, famous for its water cures, like back in the day. Wow. Probably so, had living water. Right. It makes me think then that there's something more to the story because why would that be a destination for people if it was just a, you know, a hoax? It um, wouldn't be. Um, we used to have living water inside of this snow globe, um, but that was really uh, diminished. What's Once living they, water? Living water all water needs to be energized. That's what the, with the old technology, the, the earthen technology, it used to re-energize the water so that it would be vibrant because our water now is, it's almost dead. That's mm. why when you drink and drink and drink and you just can't seem to quench your thirst. If you had living water, which is highly energized water, and it's also pure from, from any kind of toxicity, that's another part of it. Um, you could basically live on mostly water, a little bit of sustenance, and you'll never die. You'll never get old mm. because it not only regenerates you, it regenerates every cell in your being. Mm. If you didn't want a species to live very long, you're going to take away the one thing that is going to keep them living healthy, and that's the living water. So, so now we're drinking. Interesting. So they use their technology to energize the water? And to make yes. it to make it living water. Yes. Um, when I had did a I had done two videos on somebody had asked me to do a pyramid. And then I was talking to my daughter about I'm gonna have to do a pyramid video. And she's like, Mom, I keep seeing this this teal colored metallic stuff 
uh, something to do with these pyramids because she's got it too. And I'm like, oh, I said, I haven't really looked into it. So then I did. And then it was like, wow, all kinds of stuff was coming in. These pyramids were designed to do three things reinvigorate the water and also is a cooling system which mm. is also why they had all the aqueducts um, because when the water would come in it would come in a little bit limp and everything and then on the bottom it would go through it would cool down the pyramids because they were generators and it would go back out through the aqueducts and into the baths and into the drinking and it would be like bouncy 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 energized and with the aqueducts they would put all these bends in it and I was like, why are they doing that? And I could see with that, with the bin, like, you know, in the winter games, the slaloms, when you go around a bin and one of those, um, uh, what do you call those things? Oh, like the luge or bobsled? Yeah, luge. And you know, when you go around the bin, um, it would sling you. Well, mm -hmm. with this aqueduct system, they would put all these crazy bins in to keep the water energized. Because every time it would do something, it's like crash, it's like water coming out of a waterfall and crashing onto the rocks. <laughs> it's the same kind of scenario thing. But so that was one. The next one was, it was a soil generator. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> come here. I, I just got kids <laughs> about two months ago. <laughs> They're not little anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, sweetie. So basically, it's also a soil generator. I was looking at that teal metallic stuff that was in the main sarcophagus, but that was never a sarcophagus. It was a, a holding place for this material. And this material would actually degenerate plant, animal, bone, mineral, anything. Not so much mineral, but mostly plant and animals. Some mineral, if it was soft like talc, yes. And the reason it was so thick in the walls is because of this viscous material that was teal and metallic looking, it kind of looked like mercury and something teal. And what it did was it put, it put out scalar technology, which you would load all this stuff up, like um, say you were composting. Mm -hmm. So they put all this material in here and then it would basically compost all of this and then it would go out and they would use it as extremely healthy soil because you'd put everything in there to get it um decomposed altogether and so it was a soil generator a water generator and then it was an uh <laughs> your cat <ether>. keeps coming <laughs> back <laughs> and then it was also an ether technology so the water would actually um create um oh what would you call that I have no names for some of this stuff. I can just see it, but I don't know what it's called. Um, let me put her down real quick again. <laughs> so basically, the water is creating all of this. I would almost call it like a spark, but it's water. And when it's going down through, it's, it's creating an energy that goes up. The scalar energy from the sarcophagus is doing all of this. It's also being cooled by the water because Anything that's being composted starts to overheat big time. And it was overheating. So then when you go up, it's also, it also has gases and things, but it's also etheric because of the energy that's coming from the grid because it was also tapped into the grid above and tapped into the grid below. And then I'll tell you how it was tapped in. And so it would send up a beam and it would energize the grid itself, which would energize the ether. We don't think of this around us, air, as being anything, but it's a form of water. It's crazy. Right. <laughs> this is actually a form of water around us, except that it's not heavy water like we do in the oceans, which actually heavy water means something else. But anyway, so, oh gosh, it's so much information to throw at you. Oh, this, is, <laughs> this is fascinating. Keep going. Okay, so basically, this system is just there it was like a marveling machine and it was all connected to other parts of the reality um kind of like you know how we have computer boards today and you flip them over and you see all this on your computer board like the boards inside of your computer that's running your computer oh yeah motherboard Every, yeah like a motherboard I really don't know tech. <laughs> <You can laughs> a <tell>. fatherboard. <laughs> yeah. 
So basically the pyramid would be sitting here and you would have other things around it that it would connect to and it would activate like all the, um, what do you call those, obelisks. Mm. Obelisks were like our telephone poles today, except they were wireless. That's why there were obelisks everywhere um, because the energy would go and Instead of say the energy is only right here and I want it to go like, I don't know, 100 miles from here, I would have my pyramid and I would have my water and I would have obelisks or something like an obelisk because of the material they were made of. They could direct from the pyramid into the obelisk to carry that energy like wave or beam. And then from there, um, they would go into like star forts. The star forts were made out of a certain type of material that would gather from the grid. And, and it's, it's very complicated. Do you, know, do you know how the star forts were made? Oh. Because, I mean, it, it kind of seems like they were made from the air, from, you know, above. <laughs> no, no, no. They were, they were, okay, nothing. When they, the star forts, forts were first created. They were not created by human beings. Um, they were created by um, a different species. They were humanoid, but they were enormous. Um, we would call them giants. Um, mm. They were all different sized giants. Uh, we have this stuff in our mythology, but really our mythology ought to be our archaeology. <laughs> right. But... Um, they had advanced tech because they were from the bigger earth. Um, we are, let's just say we are, um, we're all related basically, but there were other beings before we were created. We were basically diminished, 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 diminished until now we are here where we are. There's even smaller people. Do you remember the pygmies in Africa, which you mm. never hear about anymore because they've been wiped out? <laughs> right. I mean, all the way down. <laughs> Fairies, if you ever wonder where they came from? <laughs> mm. Little people. <laughs> right. Well, diminished, so, diminished literally and figuratively as well. Yes, yes. Literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as we have been diminished, so has our technologies and our knowledge. It's been diminished with our size. It's terrible. Right. One thing that I have a question about and the whole Tartarian thing in general is what, what happened to all the people? Because there's lots of people who do videos about it and talk about these empty cities and these orphans and these orphan okay. trains and... Uh, here's what happened to the people. They knew, the original people here, knew that this place was on a cycle. And they knew that the waters would be coming and they always knew it was going to be temporary. Um, they went underground or they went out of here into the bigger earth. So there is another part of our snow globe that we're not supposed to know about, supposedly. Um, we're just a really small part, even though it's this big because the rest of it is behind that ice wall, um, which is artificial, by the way. The, the uh, Antarctica? You yeah, you could okay. fly over it. It's way bigger than what anybody, I mean, we are tiny compared to the rest of it. Really small. Mm. Um, I'm sure, let me think about this. I think Admiral Byrd said stuff about flying over there and next thing you know, he's seeing woolly mammoths and Right. Whatever. Or was, um, or was yeah. that the North Pole? I, I really don't know. I just know that I remember hearing something a long time ago about, you know, where he was talking about it. And um, it was on some black and white reel where he was talking on Ed Sullivan show or something. I, I can't remember. It was mm -hmm. a long time ago. But um, yeah, you could actually fly over it, uh, which is why every country is guarding that whole section and they'll shoot you out of the water they'll shoot you out of the sky if you try to go over there because it's some kind of control mechanism on our side they don't want humanity to wake up to the fact that <laughs> we are not a round ball that's a big one most people are like what are you talking about we're not a round ball right like think <laughs> overall 
when I talk about our full reality, we are a, it's not really a ball, it's more like an egg shape. Um, it's, it's like a toroidal field shape. It's really weird looking, mm. which was a live energy being at one time that diminished. I mean, oh my gosh, people, please go watch some of my videos. You're gonna be so lost. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah the, the tree of knowledge right yes the tree of knowledge on youtube if you can't find the tree of knowledge which is the craziest thing um when i first went on i went on as sonia testerman and you could find me no problem uh, with i had gone and changed my name to the tree of knowledge and within one week i was the only tree of knowledge and now you can't find me because there's literally 30, 40, 50, 60 tree of knowledges now. It's like oh, the wow. internet has buried me. Good luck in trying to find me. You'll find me under Sonia Testament before you'll find me under the tree of knowledge. Interesting. Yeah, totally buried me. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so the mud, so the, um, the oh, where did the people go? Yeah, where did the a people go? Under, a lot of us went under the ground. Under the ground, um, okay under the ground um so why did so who are the, is enormous so where are the orphans from are they from the people who went under the ground or are they just uh, where did they come from do you know some of the orphans are from actually human beings um they are very few human beings that actually had children um but most of them were created basically created, created um test two babies oh but they were not created and put into a woman because there wasn't enough people to to put all those babies in so they were created in tech you know tech where i see them in in like um incubators? almost like yeah no yeah. they're not incubators they, they've got fluid in them oh. and huh. and what they do is um they start them at a single stage and then once they get a little bit bigger, then they'll take them and put them into, when they get to like fetus stage, then they can take them and put them into the, um, I would, they almost look like, um, they kind of look like this and they grow them in there and they can, they can move around and do this like it was inside the mom's womb. Hmm. So basically they were born with, they had the genetic material. Um, you can almost call it like an arc of unlimited uh, sperm and eggs. So there was a lot of um, ability to make different children because you don't want them all coming from the same donors. You need to have that versatility. So they, so, so they, let me just try to piece this together here. <laughs> so they came here and found all these structures here with nobody around. No, they didn't come here and find anything. They came up out of the ground at one point that was their reality at one point oh. when they had gone under the ground all they did was go under the ground where they lived before so they went up at a certain point they were able to go back up again and then come out of where they originally came from but here's the problem a lot of them went down and they were at a certain stature and size they were also genetically manipulated while under the ground by the controllers. They lost a lot of their stature and size. Of course, we are them, except we're no longer 20 feet tall. <laughs> right, yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? So they didn't come from anywhere. They came from where they came from initially, underground. <laughs> Some pockets of humanity did survive above ground with help from um people from the bigger earth we would call them extra terrestrials and that just means extra land mm. mm -hmm. so they would come in and, and and help these beings to survive because this place was pretty damn devastated can you imagine mud covering everything by i don't know 60 80 100 feet deep wow you'd have to ask yourself who receded everything you're not going to start a brand new ecosystem if everything is there Hello, you're freezing up. Oh, hello. <laughs> Sonia? Sonia? Uh, 
Hello? Oh, did I lose you? Yeah, you froze. Oh no, what part did you miss? I don't, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I don't know, a lot. I'm not sure. I think we were talking about, um, geez, I don't know, the people coming up from down below. But, okay. Uh, so where, where down below? I mean, are we talking, how far under the earth are we talking? Agartha? Where are we talking from? Um, no. Um, the place, okay. Since this place is way bigger than most people can even grasp, you, when you go under the ground, it is, you can go 60 miles under the ground and you are nowhere near the middle. Not even. Yeah. <laughs> you can go to thousand miles under the ground and you're still nowhere near the middle <laughs> so when i say under the ground i'm going to say under the crust because they're nowhere near the middle <laughs> no <laughs> um there are huge oceans under the ground below us also i mean oceans bigger than our snow globe just to say this was one of the oceans under the ground and we're this teeny little snow globe on top of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think main, yeah. i think mainstream science has even said confirmed that that there's large oh, have bodies, they? Oh, yeah, large bodies of water underneath yeah you have to i just did a video not that far back a couple of videos ago because um somebody had asked me where did these waterfalls come from uh especially when water would have to go up uphill oh yeah to get to the top and it's that like was that's one of my questions, yeah. <laughs> um, real easy. Um, so I remote-viewed it, and I'm like, oh, well, that's stupid. It's so easy. <laughs> okay, some of these mountains where these waterfalls are coming out of them are petrified trees. And in this snow globe to begin with, we did not have a lot of water. Are you still there? Yeah. So okay, good. you're so still. I have to make sure I didn't lose you. <laughs> No, I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> so basically, um, in this snow globe, uh, to begin with, we had very little water in here. And we didn't have oceans like that. We had some, but they were small, really small. Mm. And fresh water was very scarce. So we had these enormous trees in here that are the size of mountains. And through the tree root system, you had the roots that went down into the freshwater ocean below when they cut these trees off with their tech because they were cut um the water is still flowing through the tree root up oh. think of when you siphon gas out of a tank oh. you put your tube in you get the you suck it in you get the inertia of it going you can drain that entire tank of gas just with that inertia oh wow okay well since these oceans are enormous that is I'm gonna run out anytime soon and then you're wondering my god the the amount of water coming out of one waterfall can you imagine how big the oceans are below us <laughs> right they're not well, gonna run out that reminds soon. me maybe maybe you saw this video about that the the how large the trees were like the trees were immense and that what we have now are just like tiny saplings compared to what we yeah, yeah. This, in, this entire, this is the main thing. I ran across this guy called Roger from Mud Fossil University. And he talks about, we're living on top of, on top of dead people or beings or an ecosystem, whatever. And they're in ginormous. So I started remote viewing it. And he's absolutely right. Our bigger earth is so big. Do you think that we could have sustained any trees this big in this tiny little snow globe no no way no way this place is so small compared to the bigger earth the bigger earth at one time had beings that could ease it's like a fish if you take a fish and put it in a little tiny tank it'll stay small but if you put it into a enormous tank before you know you got a goldfish as big as i am <laughs> it's the same thing yeah. it's the same thing this is why we had giants at one time and they kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller it's because they had 
domed us off and diminished our area that we live in and things just started getting smaller and smaller. And it's not just us, the whole ecosystem got smaller, smaller, smaller. And it was through the doming because at one point there was no dome on us. Oh, really? And so we were part of the bigger earth and everything was enormous. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, I suggest everybody go check out Roger from Mud Fossil University. You know, boy, is he enlightening. <laughs> is that, does he have a YouTube channel or is this a website? Mm -hmm. He's He's got a YouTube channel and um, he is a professor. He is also um, an archaeologist and he has done some serious, hardcore physical research. He, he has found and taken rocks and found that they are there's DNA in the rock. It's blood. When blood when rocks turn red, it's because it's actually um, DNA. It's blood. And oh, wow. we have yeah. And that's why rocks bleed. And people are like rocks don't bleed. Well, yeah. He's found um, tendons and everything in in mountains. Actual tendons of humans. I mean, he goes into all of this. He's had DNA done on rocks. He's had scans done on it and we are literally living on dead things <laughs> that were enormous <laughs> wow yeah and it's like oh my gosh everything's coming out now everything's coming in the wash <laughs> it's all coming out <laughs> that's amazing yeah i mean my uh my friend and uh my daughter and i we love rocks we went out collecting rocks and looking for rocks and um and then um my friend was telling me that eckhart I forgot his name. Eckhart Tolle was saying that rocks are old souls or they're ascended, <laughs> ascended masters, I think. More like old people. <laughs> old people. So they're pieces of people or they're trees? Both. It was a whole ecosystem. Animals, people, trees, vegetation. Wow. Mind-boggling yeah. stuff here. You have to, he said something and I was just astounded. I always wondered where and how gold and silver and minerals, copper, whatever was made. And he had done a thing where he proved through doing his scientific stuff that and it's in us too now at our, our size, but it is small. Um, we have these parasites inside of us. We're born with them and their excrements are the gold, are the silver, are what? the copper. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes. So if you go and take some, you know, you do your number two and you go and break that down, you'll find all that, those elements in there because we have those same parasites in us, even though they're much smaller, producing it. Well, can you imagine if you're the size of a mountain? So you're wondering where all these gold streak comes from. It's from the parasites that were in them, but because of the size, we've got that huge amount of it. <laughs> Wow. We have monatomic gold all in our oceans. <laughs> it's full of it. Isn't that the philosopher stone that the mana? Yeah. What they called that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The philosopher stone. Um, I see several different things being called the philosopher stone. One is that it's knowledge. Uh, one is that it's an actual, actual physical thing. Um, so I just don't know which one they're actually talking about because there's several different things they say is the philosopher's stone. Right. One is actually writing, the philosopher's stone of writing, where, where all language started from at one point. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Um, well, very interesting um, is an understatement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, so what do you think is going on in this current reality? We have this, you know, pandemic thing going on and people oh, yeah. are all yeah. masking yeah. up again. And, uh, oh, geez. They're yeah. Forcing I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to say, this, people. this is the craziest thing. Do you remember when you were in elementary school and you learned the reproductive system for air? and that we have to breathe in oxygen so we can breathe out our carbon dioxide. Right. And yeah. 
we have this system and you can't block it up because you'll get deathly ill. So if you're not breathing in oxygen and you keep breathing in carbon dioxide, it's like taking a tailpipe of your car and putting it into your car and closing the windows mm. and think you're going to survive. Um, when people put these masks on their face, you can even read in the box, it does nothing. It does nothing. <laughs> but right. what it does prevent you from doing is breathing in fresh oxygen. And so you have oxygen deprivation. It overloads your hemoglobin with carbon dioxide, which causes brain damage, kidney damage, organ failure, and you'll die, heart failure. And it's because you simply suffocated yourself to death with your own carbon dioxide. How long can you go down and hold your breath underwater? Because it's no different. You are killing so many brain cells because you're not feeding it oxygen. This is stuff we learned at our age in elementary school. What's going on with people? It's like ignorance is the new thing we're dashing out. And gullibility is right along with it. <laughs> Right. And obedience, too. And obedience. Don't forget the obey. Yeah. <laughs> Don't question anything. Just obey. Mm -hmm. Somebody actually said on one of these uh, one of these idiots out here running our reality, you should never look deep into anything. It's like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> you should never look deep. In Don't go down rabbit holes. Don't look into anything. Don't question. That's bad. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so the whole thing is, um, if everyone knew that you could never get germs because germ theory was a psyops. Oh, I touched something and now I'm, I'm contagious with these germs and I'm going to be sick and ill. It was a psyops. Um, the more we touch dirty things, the healthier our immune system gets because we're arming it up. You yeah. go into a sterilized reality, you have just knocked your immune system down to nothing. Nobody's going to come and cough all over you and give you anything. They've done test after test after test, especially in the, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, where they took all these sick people and they tried to trans, you know, cross this stuff and nobody could get anyone sick. But so they were like, well, let's create germ theory and make people think they can. That way we, they can start injecting them. The only way you're getting through this temple is if you're allowing it through your vein. Right. Think about the Amish. They are the healthiest people in this whole snow globe. What's the one thing they don't have? TV. Vaccines. <laughs> TV, vaccines. They don't have any of it. Yeah. They have their heirloom vegetables that have not been GMO'd. The nutrition right out of it. That's why they're so healthy. Right. That's why they live really long and that's why they stay healthy the whole time they don't have sudden infant death syndrome you know why is that well let me see their babies aren't getting shot up <laughs> oh speaking of babies your cat <laughs> she's back she's yeah back. i mean i could go on and on on every single subject <laughs> yeah well i just, i think there's just some people who are despairing about the whole you know issue and you know and I think it's tied up to, you know, they're to making a living and it's tied up in yeah. some way yeah. that the problem is that once you compromise, they'll keep pushing the bar. They'll keep pushing the bar until they've pushed you into the grave. Yeah. These bioweapons, and let's call them what they are, they are bioweapons. Back in 2000. And two, Fauci did everything he could to get the bioweapon um, from our department where our tax money created this stuff. <laughs> Most people have no clue. There's a guy named David Martin who does patents and things. He works oh, yeah. for a corporation. And him and Reiner Fulmish, who's a American German, he's German, but he came to America. He's a big time lawyer fighting corporation right. guy. Yeah. Um, they got together and you know, from there it just shut off. So these bioweapons are the takedown of humanity. I mean, what they have inside of them, I'm sure you've seen on the internet where the scientists have come out, the ones that are not on the dark side, but are for humanity survival, and said they've had graphene oxide in them, 
They've had four distinctive parasites, one that is aluminum and carbon. What is aluminum and carbon? Carbon is you and me. Aluminum is tech, nanotech. So, and then they had some that are polypodium. I think that was one of them. Another one was a hydro vulgaris. It kind of looks like an octopus. And then there's another one. Um, and that's just a few things. They've also got sterilization in there. Uh, where it will sterilize and kill all the sperm in the male, and it will eat every egg out of a female ovary sac. So if you wanted to get rid of a population, you're going to make them sterile on both ends. And then with the nanotech, which builds inside of you, oh my gosh. And don't forget, it's also an, a DNA, an RNA changer for your DNA, which is that's what's taking down your white blood cell system. Um, basically what it's doing is it's shutting it off, telling your body that everything is okay. We don't have to protect ourselves. And so if you get stung by a bee, you can die. If you get cut, you can die. Any germs can come in that you breathe. Anything that they're spraying overhead, we're breathing this in, it, you can die. Mm -hmm. The other thing is with the um, change of the RNA, it's also shutting down your detoxing system. And that consists of your liver and your kidneys. If your liver and kidneys are now shut down, not to detox, you can't even get this crap out of your body naturally. What happens with people who don't have kidneys? They die because they get over-toxified from their own blood, from the toxins, that, from food, water, air, anything. And if you don't have your liver and your kidneys, you're going to die. It's as simple as that. I know that's a hard pill to swallow. So you're going to have to start detoxing. You're going to have to force your kidneys to work and you're going to have to force your liver to start functioning. There's a woman called Amanda Vollmer. She is a Canadian doctor. She studied in Eastern medicine and Western medicine. And I recommend everyone go to her YouTube channel because she talks about all of this in detail and how you can detox. On my last video, I gave a list of detoxing for these people so they can start detoxing. I don't want to see the end of humanity. I want us to survive this. Yeah, I, I, that was kind of my next question. You know, how do you see this playing out? I do see this playing out two ways. At one point, uh, this is going to be out there for a lot of your people or whoever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be any more out of there than we, we've already been. So. <laughs> okay, this is going to be really out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is going to be one of those. Oh All my, right. they walk oh. away scratching their head. Yeah, yeah, but, fire, um, fire away. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a species known as the greys and grey aliens, except they're oh, not yeah. aliens, they're us. They're what happened to us, the dead end. You cannot take a perfect thing made in perfection by God Almighty, and start thinking that I'm going to tinker with it and do all of this and turn it into half AI and think you're not screwing something over really mm -hmm. badly. Right. What happens is down a certain timeline, um, the first babies being born now, the black eyed babies, it's from the graphene oxide, but it's even worse than that. That's just the physical symptom you can see. They're also already connected to AI in utero which means mommy and daddy, you and me, we have nothing to say about it. That's why these babies that are being born now, as soon as they're born, they can sit up, open their eyes and look around. Huh? In what reality does that work? Yeah, wow. Because they are now half Borg. And they're from the inside, it's from the shots. All you need is a man or a woman or both. And you have the new DNA that's being created. And it's being created with nanotech and picotech. And that tech is taking over the organic part of humanity. It's horrible. So yeah. basically, the grays had come back at a certain point and warned humanity that this is a dead end because what ends up happening in their reality is they can no longer procreate. Because they can't procreate, they had to clone. Cloning is a dead end. And there goes the end of the human species. Mm. So in order to save the human species, people like me and other people came into this reality to do a, make a difference. And it's as simple as that. 
And that's why you um, <laughs> put together your YouTube channel and do what you do, right? Yep, that's why I do what I do. I do not want to see the end of humanity as we know it because of the evil, corrupt cabal, AI agenda. What can people do about it? Stop complying. Mm. Just stop it. Every time you make a compliance, you take a step back. You can only step back so much before you're off the cliff. Right. And there's nothing left to save. It's over. Yeah. Stop complying. Just say no. I think Nancy Reagan said <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> My cat's crying. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. it's been wonderful, Sonia. Um, I want to respect your time, and um, we could go on probably for a long time. And, yeah. <laughs> but um, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Dan. I appreciate it, and I, I have a good time. <laughs> I right. love talking to people. Um, I did back off my Skyping because I was Skyping with everybody and their brother. <laughs> yeah, I had to because I found that I was just consumed. <laughs> yeah, it could be too much. Yeah.